Ken and Joe are weapons with a long tradition in the martial arts of Japan. Like the spear, bow and arrow, naginata, and other implements of combat, the ken or sword and the jo or staff are integral to many forms of kabuto. Even today, we utilize a number of the weapons of kabuto, the ancient Japanese fighting arts, to help us in our development and understanding of center. Any student of any martial art can benefit by including the practice of Ken and Jo in his or her training. While some may choose to make a complete study of Kendo and Jodo to the extent of becoming instructors, many others may approach Ken and Jo as center developing adjuncts to such arts as Aikido or Karate. The goal of this type of training is to take advantage of the many lessons that can be learned with regard to timing, distance, accuracy, concentration, and the integration of the weapons with your center. There should develop such a connection that the weapons seem to be extensions of your own body. Through repetitive practice of basic grips, defenses, and strikes, you can begin to feel the invisible yet powerful force known as center. The action of the Boken and the Jo provide you with excellent feedback on your level of progress and may even be seen as a manifestation of the strength of your center. Once you have an understanding of basic movements with Boken and Jo, you may begin to experiment with freestyle forms. In freestyle, you should perform in the manner that is unique to your body, emphasizing center, focus, and natural, spontaneous movements. With a Japanese sword or with a boken, your right hand should always be placed at the front of the hilt and your left hand at the back. The space between your right and left hands should be about the width of one fist. The last three fingers of your left hand are very important for they carry the weight of the entire sword. It is imperative that these fingers have a secure grip at the very end of the hilt. If your grip is weak, you will lose the sword. Your left thumb and index finger and your entire right hand should hold the hilt lightly. It should be emphasized, however, that the power to control the kent comes from your center, not just from hand power. For a showman swing, at the end of the downswing, squeeze the boken tightly with a twisting motion of both hands, as though you were wringing out a towel. The twist should result in your wrists being aligned naturally and comfortably, not overextended. A good indicator of correct position is when the web between your thumb and index finger of both hands is directly on top of the hilt. For a shomenuchi strike, raise the boken directly overhead. On the downswing, you should slide forward one step with knees slightly bent. Settle down into your center at the end of each cut. Your legs, as well as your arms, should move with each downswing.
Yokomanuchi begins like Shomanuchi, with Boken raised overhead. On the downswing, slide forward, this time leading with your left shoulder, hip, and leg. Your hip should twist slightly, and the tip of your cane should be aimed at the side of your partner's head or neck. The cut should be on the diagonal. Like the two previous moves, ski may be performed from either the left or right and must have the momentum to pass through the intended target. The power for the thrust must come from your center and must extend through your arm, the sword, and even out beyond the sword. After the ski, check your balance and posture, neither stretching nor leaning too far forward. Shihogiri is an exercise to improve your stability and balance. In the beginning, simply swing the boken in shomenuchi fashion. As you become comfortable with the exercise, change from shomenuchi swings to forceful shomenuchi cuts through the air. The tip of your boken should end on a line that is even with your throat. To further increase the level of difficulty, you may perform hapogiri or eight-way cut. For the four-weight ski, pay attention to the footwork and hip movements that are necessary in this multi-directional exercise. Always face forward, leading with either your left or right side, and thrust with power from your center. You should aim at the heart or throat of an imaginary partner, and the edge of your sword should be on the diagonal for the thrust. It is necessary to twist your wrists to ensure this position There are a number of kamai, or ready positions, for boken. From kamai, you are able to either defend or attack at a moment's notice. You should be in a state of relaxed alertness, or ready mind, with shoulders down and free from tension, knees slightly bent, with one foot forward. At any time, you can move quickly from Kamai. The Joe or staff offers entirely different opportunities for training. Because the Joe has no blade, your hands may slide freely along its length. Because of its additional length, and because both ends may be used for striking, you will experience a different mai, and you must learn new hand positions. For Joe, whether using a standard grip or an overhand grip, the distance between your hands will be determined by the width of your shoulders. For basic shomenuchi, yokomenuchi, and ski attacks, your forward hand should slide so that both hands maintain a comfortable, natural feeling distance, which is approximately the same as the width of your shoulders. As with bokem, the last three fingers of your back hand should tightly grip the jaw, carrying its full weight. 
Since either end of the jaw may be used for striking, either your left or your right hand may assume the role of backhand. For Shomanuchi, lift your hands directly overhead and step forward to make the strike. Your forward hand will slide along the jaw to maintain correct hand position. You should tighten your grip in both hands at the end of the downswing. During the swing, your hands and the jaw should rotate, imparting a spiral movement to the jaw. From Kamai position, Hidari Gadan Haso, or left Gadan Haso, lift your arms overhead and proceed as if to perform a Shomanuchi strike. However, in this case, your left foot and left shoulder should move forward, your hips should twist, and you should aim the jaw at your partner's temple or neck, sliding your left hand along the jaw. To perform a ski with Joe, the slight rotation of your hands and thus of the Joe must coordinate precisely with your forward movement. You must be prepared to absorb the impact that would come to you through the Joe if it were to hit its target. The energy will transfer from the Joe to your hands and arms, to your center, and finally to your back leg. Your back leg, therefore, must be very strong and balanced. When practicing ski or other strikes, you should practice as though there would be an impact, always maintaining full focus and good posture. There are specific kamai for Jo, and again, the point with kamai is to be in a state of relaxed anticipation, ready to react quickly. Your power must come from your center so that you will be in control. In certain kamai, the jaw is hidden behind the body or clothing, thus concealing the position and length of the jaw, a distinct advantage during a contest.
To liven up your practice and make it more realistic, have your training partner use a ken rather than a boken. With the edge of the blade being very obvious, you will promptly clean up any lazy habits you may have had before. You will quickly realize that at any moment, your joe could be cut in two by the sword. You must always be aware of the relationship of your joe to the blade. You will discover at what points and angles it is safe to strike the blade in defensive moves, and you will learn where and how you may attack. You will understand why your center must be a part of all your movements. Even when you are training against a Bokken, try to behave as though your partner were wielding a live blade. Another valuable training method is to work with an empty-handed partner. Although this scenario would rarely arise in a street situation, it is useful in developing your sensitivity to your partner's body movements and balance. Since you own the Joe, you have the ability to seriously injure your partner. This requires that you use the Joe with accuracy, finesse, and maturity if you are to avoid injury to your partner. distance relationship, or mai, of Joe against empty hands is unique and provides an opportunity to practice adapting and adjusting to a new situation. It is essential to master the often elusive but all-important spiral technique. When you use a sword or boken to make a cut, to attack, there is no spiral or rotation of the blade. However, when you use a sword or boken to defend against a strike, you must employ a spiral movement. The spiraling action of your blade deflects the other weapon offline, dispersing its energy and force. If you hit your partner's sword straight on, without using the spiral movement, you will break your sword. To produce the spiral movement, you must perfect a way of twisting your hands, but this will have little effect if your center, which provides the power, is not connected to your hands. Your center power is far greater than your muscle power. The spiral movement is also essential for Joe work. With the Joe, there are two spirals that should be understood. The first type of spiral is one that has a straightforward motion and is used for its ski attack. It is achieved by simply rotating your hands. The Joe turns around its axis. The second type of spiral moves the Joe off its center point to describe a circle around the center point. To achieve the second type of spiral, you must rotate your back hand in a big, strong circle. This will produce a large spiral effect in the Joe. As you progress, you will learn to achieve the same powerful effect with a smaller hand movement and smaller spiral. This takes much repetitive practice.
The second type of spiral is used in conjunction with the first type of spiral in nearly all Joe defensive movements. When using weapons, it is most necessary to be agile and quick. A heavy, flat-footed stance will get you in serious trouble. In most cases, a basic hanmi is appropriate. Some situations call for a neko ashidachi, or cat foot stance. In the cat foot stance, your weight should be primarily on your back leg, with the foot flat on the mat. Your front leg should bear practically no weight, and your heel should be off the floor with the ball of your foot barely touching the mat. Both knees should be bent, almost in a crouch-pounce position. Since this stance is similar to standing on one leg, it is very important that you maintain your balance by having a solid center. From this position, you can move in almost any direction to either defend or to attack. Neko Ashidachi is often employed when retreating into a defensive position and before stepping forward into an attack position. Neko Ashidachi stance is often used in Karate Do and other martial arts. To begin practicing Joe spiral movements, start by deflecting a Boken Shomenuchi. You should attempt large spirals at first, always keeping your face forward and your eyes on your partner. The point of this exercise is to use your arms, shoulders, legs, hips, indeed your whole body, to impart power to your Joe. You will find that when you move your shoulders forward, your hips and legs will follow, creating in effect a spiral movement of your body. This movement, plus the twisting movement of your hands, combined with the spiral movement of the Joe, is what powers the Joe. If you generate enough power, connecting your body and the Joe, your partner's boken will not only be deflected off the center line, but will also have enough momentum that it will swing out and around, leaving a large opening where you may attack. Center line training from a Shomenuchi attack can be approached from a number of different positions. It is good to start slowly with basic spirals and work up to more complicated techniques. In all cases, the point of the training is to integrate body, weapons, and power, thereby developing your center. Let's watch.
Have your partner stand with the Joe in a Sagam position. Hit the Joe with your Boken. Concentrate on timing and the placement of the points of impact for both Boken and Joe. Work on developing the power to remove the Joe from the center line. Next, move to a more dynamic form of exercise. Have your partner swing his Joe in a Shomenuchi motion. This changes the timing with which you must respond. As you work on this, your partner can increase the speed of his strike. He can alternate the timing of his strike, and you will have much to practice. Let's watch. You will need to use your previous spiral training to deflect the Joe from the center line and create an opening for your attack. If your deflection is weak and ineffective, there will be no opening. Your partner will recover quickly and perhaps will attack you. While working
working on your use of the power spiral, you must also add the element of timing. Everything must be coordinated and come together at the critical moment. Your attack should be a continuation of your first spiral defense. It should never be considered as a separate step. However, for training purposes, you may break the move into two parts and proceed slowly, always focusing on the target area of your partner. Your body must be relaxed and free to move, to respond and take advantage of the openings that you create or that present themselves. These defensive techniques may be used against Shomenuchi, Yokomenuchi, and ski attacks. The speed at which your hands and body can move determine the power of your defense. You should execute a fast spiral just at the moment of impact to produce the maximum effect. Let's watch. After deflecting your partner's weapon, your attack must be quick and decisive. The defense and attack should feel like one smooth motion. Move in with your full power supporting your attack. Project your mind and focus through your partner's body at the point of attack. This mental imaging increases the power behind your attack. It also makes you keenly aware of the situation, which is crucial in avoiding injury to your partner or yourself. Let's watch again.
To improve your comfort level with the Joe, you may incorporate these exercises into your practice. This exercise strengthens your wrists and increases their flexibility. Grasp the Joe about one-third from the top and begin to swing the Joe, opening and closing your hand in rhythm with the swing. Relax your shoulders and try not to stiffly control the Joe. Instead, let the motion of the Joe lead you. Let your body move naturally. You should do this exercise with both your left and right hands. Next, use both hands to turn the Joe, allowing your hand and arm movements to lead your body in a natural rhythm. When the Joe is in your right hand, step forward with your right foot, and vice versa. After practicing this movement, you will gradually be able to do freestyle and move in many directions. Use this exercise to strengthen your finger muscles, increase the strength with which you can hold your jaw, and improve your usage of the jaw. Place your hand about one-third from the top and begin to roll the jaw over and between your fingers. There are many combinations or patterns that may be used. Try different ways of doing this exercise, devising several ways that work well for you. You should work with both your left and your right hands. After you can move the Joe with agility, you should begin to add wrist movements for a more advanced form of exercise. You can develop your own style of practice with the Joe. Try to hold the Joe in a variety of positions. In this example, at the midpoint of the Joe. Be creative with your movement. The important point is to integrate your weapon with your body to become so familiar with the Joe that it feels like an extension of your hand. Let's watch.
After a time, you will feel ready to begin freestyle exercising with your training weapons. For both Joe and Boken, the principles are the same. Start slowly, concentrating on steady, continuous movements. Relax your mind and body. Try to let your center and the weapons work together. Your moves should not be pre-planned. This is not a kata. With time, you will be able to increase your speed, power, and the complexity of your moves. A note of caution, when performing freestyle exercises, it is easy to forget to use the spiral movement in your swings and strikes. To become strong and balanced, we need to have good body alignment. Often when training with empty hands, we discover that we are off balance with our hands and arms away from the midline of our bodies, disconnected from our centers. The use of Joe and Boken compels us to keep our hands together in front of center. It compels us to cultivate skills of observation, accuracy, timing, and coordination. There is the potential for these skills to meld and become part of a powerful center.
Za, Hiroshi Ikeda demonstrates Aikido Sawariwaza. From basic drills to advanced applications. These techniques, performed from a seated position, are excellent aids to center development. No matter what your art, these centering and strengthening techniques can improve your training. Koshi with Hiroshi Ikeda includes breakfall ukemi and important drills to help you prepare for the more than 25 different Koshinage techniques shown. Exciting camera angles, slow motion sequences and close-up shots let you analyze the movements of uke and nage. This video offers insight into a difficult technique.